beautiful early spring day and I'm making this video in response to numerous requests. It's basically just an update on my pond which is behind me there. Now I don't think there's that much to report but I'll go around and see what's happening, uh, report that and see what you think. As you can see that water behind me is still a churned up mess. There's carp in here because before I closed my shop I got a load of fish given. I put them in a big container that was fed from the pond. I couldn't find a home for them, so I dumped them in the pond. They've stirred it up yet again. In the winter, it was reasonably clear. I could see about 18 inches, about a foot and a half down. Since then, it's turned mucky again. Water's still very healthy, but it isn't clear. One thing I am pleased with is how well my patches of skunk cabbage are doing. This is the yellow version of skunk cabbage, huge yellow flowers on there. And last year it did well. Some of the seed heads landed on the side and here I've got a huge clump of new skunk cabbage. Now I'm hoping that these spread right across this side of my pond because it gets quite a lot of sun here. As you can tell I'm squinting like hell. And these leaves get about this big that can get about three foot tall and they stay this waxy green colour right till early autumn. It's a lovely plant. It smells a little bit though, hence the name skunk cabbage. It smells a little bit like foxes when foxes mark the territory. A bit foisty. Not the nicest smelling thing but it's beautiful to look at. This thing here is for the terrapins I've got in the pond. It's a nice rough mat, just came out of the house and they climb up here and sun themselves. Unfortunately when I arrived they all dived in but if I can see them swimming around anywhere I'll get a short clip of them. And there's a mallard just landed on the other side of the pond there. So if I can get up without making too much noise I'll try and get some footage of that as well. Nah, those ripples at the far side are of where the mallard was. As soon as I stood up it flew away. But I noticed a little terrapin there, so I'll get a quick shot of that. There you go, that's a yellow bellied slider. Oh, ho, ho. My little boat is absolutely full of the most disgusting water you can possibly imagine. I swear this thing's living in there, and that's because. This little boathouse I've got hasn't got a waterproof roof. Still haven't got round to putting a proper roof on it. So if I want to go out in the boat, that needs draining. Now I've left a lot of the vegetation long. I've cut very little back last year. And I've left it long for the wildlife. And because I didn't have much time to cut it. But in here, there's actually a nest. There you go, there's a water hen's nest in there. It hasn't got any eggs yet, but they have been going in and out of it. I've got quite a few different types of iris around the pond. These are variegated uh, yellow iris, variegated yellow flag. Uh, these ones are American water iris, which is, oh, iris, not lavagata. I can't remember what it's called. Iris versicolor, that's it. They're a really nice one. Another lovely patch of skunk cabbage. And another big clump down there. They've just come from the seeds. There's probably more going to appear there as well. Very nice. Ah, that's a bit of a bummer. In here, there's a duck's nest. That's a mallard's nest in there. It's actually not in at the moment. It's kind of covered it over with bits of feathers and leaves and so on. But I'm sure it's got eggs in there. It's just on the other side of here where the nest is. And as I say, there's no duck on it at the moment, but I did get footage the other day of the duck on the nest. So here's a really short clip of that. There we've got a female mallard sitting on eggs in a nest right next to our pond. Well I think I've just discovered where the female mallard has gone that was sitting on eggs. Feathers, feathers, more feathers, more feathers, more feathers. And all those feathers are leading in a direct line right across that field to the local fox set. Oh. It's 
opposite end of them ducks. It's a bit of a bugger, because every year I've had successful mallards nesting on the pond. And it's been scuppered this year by the foxes. Now, looking from the pond, down into the garden, I can see a couple of young rabbits down there. Hopefully I'll be able to keep it quite steady. There you go. Two little rabbits destroying my grass. Well, there's a nice surprise. Just come around the side of my pond and the water hens got off this nest that I hadn't even realised was there. And it's full of eggs. I think there's a good seven or eight eggs in there. And down one side of the damn wall, which I've got lined with pond liner, just to kill everything off along the wall, and also to channel water down here, we've got some gunnera. This is gunnera manicata, which is a giant rhubarb. The leaves get this big and it gets like six to eight feet tall. This is quite a big one, but they do get a hell of a lot bigger. This is probably only about eight or nine years old, so it hasn't spread that much, but it gets gigantic leaves on in the summer. And it looks like it survived the winter okay, because it's got loads of leaves coming up, which is an excellent sign. Another big patch of iris. These ones are just ordinary yellow flag, yellow iris. And there's water mint as well coming up down here. Just near the iris, we've got loads of wood rush and meadow sweet coming up as well. It likes to grow in boggy areas. There's bistort, there's all sorts growing in here. Absolutely all sorts. And it should be coming up in the next few months. Oh, there's a nation of plants around this side. More iris. We've got bulrushes. Well, not true bulrush, but typha. That's typha angustifolia. Oh, right up the top end, we've got typha latifolia. And I'm sure there's another type of typha as well. That's marsh woundwort. That's quite a nice plant. In here, we've got some water forget-me-not coming up. There's a load of weed there as well, which has got quite a lot of sediment on, so I hope that comes away. It's actually quite an invasive one. It's um, New Zealand stone crop. But I'm hoping that it goes green because this gives an awesome place for the fish to spawn. And when the fish spawn on that weed behind me there, they can literally thrash the water to a foam. You come out early in the morning, normally around mid-May, and there's hundreds of fish mostly rude, absolutely thrashing that to a foam behind me there, tearing it all up, eggs everywhere. It's tremendous. Behind me there we've got another huge skunk cabbage. That's probably the biggest one I've got. It can get easily three foot six tall. It's a real monster. We've got different types of bamboo all around the pond. This is yellow bamboo. This one's some ground cover bamboo. I think there's another yellow bamboo behind me there. I haven't got any black bamboo because that's damned expensive, but there's loads of different types. In fact, I'll show you one of the really big ones that I've got. Not around the pond, but elsewhere in the garden. Here's one of the bamboos that I absolutely love, and for the life of me, I can't remember the proper name of it. it might be Plea Blaster something or other, but it's a real big one. And I've got about half a dozen big clumps of this around in the garden. Next time I get a digger in, I'm going to divide it up and plant it all over the place because it gives year-round colour and the slightest little breeze you get like a rustling sound. It's really, really nice. I've got some cracking tree heathers. This is a golden one and it's probably a good six foot tall. I do keep it trimmed as well. It would go even higher than this. But I like to keep it trimmed to keep it looking quite colourful. It tends to lose its colour when it goes big and it goes a bit leggy. So I've got golden ones, I've got green ones, it just adds year-round colour to the garden. So this is looking off the raised deck, just near my log cabin, down into the pond. Pretty good view, it's none too green at the moment though, around the sides, still looks a bit bare, still very early in the season. And I can't see that little water hen anywhere, I think it's hiding underneath one of those platforms. Just a very quick look around the damn wall. It's a beautiful big dark red acer here, just coming back into leaf. I think that one's called Blood Good. It's a really dark one that goes a brilliant orange in the winter. Here we've got a big contorted hazel, all squiggly and wiggly. There's a few 
straight branches coming up off it though, so I'm going to have to get the nippers out and snip those off. But this is a really nice plant. Imagine how many little magic wands you could make out of all this stuff. Absolutely hellish. And it gets nuts on as well. More aces along here. This is a reasonably big Acer Palmatum Dissectum Atropoporia. I might have put too many words in there, but it's a purple, compact, spreading Acer. There's a few little green ones further along there as well, but they're a little bit overgrown. It needs a good clean out this thing. There's more Acers here. I cannot remember the name of this one. Uh, that one might be called Sangu Kaku. I seem to remember it was quite an expensive one, that one. And that goes really very dark orange, I think, in the back end of the year. Uh, I can never remember what colour these blooming things go, but there's plenty of Acers. There's loads of ferns still just, just to come up as well. There's heathers, conifers, hebes, all sorts of things on this bank side. I just like year-round colour. And that's about it, really. There's not all that much to report. Most of the fish aren't very visible because the water's still a bit too cold. Generally, when the weather warms up, all the gold north, all the rudd, they all come up right to the surface and sun themselves. They haven't done that yet, but I'm sure they'll still be there, hopefully, because I don't think we've had a visit from the heron, otter, mink, or anything else that might be eating fish. I think they're pretty safe in there. Hopefully this video has pleased the folks who wanted me to do an update. Sorry there wasn't much more to report, but um, I'll do another one, maybe in a couple of months, when all the vegetation's really started to come up and it's looking a little bit more green around the sides, when the fish are up on the top, when there's a little bit more happening. Thanks for watching. Let us be as fool.